Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Connect Zone, where we get to navigate the shifts of life with God's Word. My name is Guma Albert, and I'm your host. Really excited that you're tuned in wherever you are at. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your very first time tuning in and being part of the show, we want to say thank you for being part of the family today. We're having an amazing conversation, and I hope at your comfort you'll get to you know, interact and be part of the conversation as we get to learn from the most amazing couple around town. And uh, you know, I'll allow them to introduce themselves, and then we can get started. Ladies first. Oh, <laughs> ladies. Ladies. <laughs> uh, very good morning. My name is Precious Barbara Mohomoza, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. It's good to have you here, Barbara. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, after the beautiful lady has introduced herself, <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn, I guess. My name is Ivan Muhumuza Amoti. You can call me Blessed Ivan or Blesso. Um, she's the epitome of beauty in my world. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for catching up with us on the Connect Zone this morning. Yeah, it's yeah. good to have you guys here on the Connect Zone. Connect Zone is a platform that has been created for uh, particularly the young people, teens and young adults, uh, to just be able to, one, uh, help them reach their God-given purpose. And having to have you guys here on the Connect Zone, it's a, it's a privilege uh, for us to be able to learn from you so that we can thrive in the areas that we are struggling in, but also be helped in one way or the other to reach our God-given potential. And so we are glad and privileged to have you here Thank on the you. Connect Zone. Thank and you. for everyone who is tuning in, wherever you're watching from, please feel free to start you know, sending in your questions about relationships. We are going to be talking about relationships, love, uh, just like uh, the two are authors of Hooked. The two, uh, Barbara and uh, Ivan, the authors of Hooked, they talk about uh, thriving in love, sex, and relationships. Now, I know someone probably watching and saying, okay, I'm going to learn how to thrive in sex. Eh? But guys, before you even start thinking further, <laughs> please relax and cool down as we talk about this very particular topic. It's, a very, it's going to be an amazing conversation, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them on our Facebook page, and sure, we'll get in touch with you. Uh, even as we dive into it, uh, the question would be, if, uh, just an icebreaker question for us to get started. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been told that you look like someone really famous? Who was that? Do I go first? Yeah, you can yeah. go first, please. please. Feel free. Feel free. Well, I guess I'm the famous person. <laughs> I'm on TV anyway. <laughs> so when I was younger, guys used to say that I looked like Bow Wow. Do you guys know Bow Wow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Who are these like, famous, famous, famous artists? So guys used to say I look like Bow Wow. I don't know whether it's true, but I guess I do. But I think I look like... Anyway. Uh, yeah. I'll skip that. <laughs> um, I've had several people tell me that I look like Barbie Jaglani. Oh, Bobby Chagulani. Yeah. Okay. And your name is Bobby. And, name is and your Bobby. name is Bobby. So maybe we are sisters, but no, not really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really, yeah. Uh, I've also been told that I look like, I don't know if most of people know him, but I've been told I look like Kobe. Kobe Bryant. I know you guys oh. know Kobe Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only that he didn't have as much hair <laughs> yeah, as, as you much, do. Yeah, as much hair as yeah. I do. But uh, yeah, those are some of the celebrities that we have been told uh, we look like. Would you uh, feel free to go down on our Facebook page and let us know we which really kind look like <laughs> we, we look like them or even what kind of celebrity have you been told you look like? Um, you know, uh, talking about the hooked and celebrities and everything, uh, for me now, you guys, I find you guys to be celebrities now. The fact that you, you, get, you go to download all this wisdom and we can get to read it all over the whole world, they, yeah. that, that, uh, for me, you guys are celebrities right now and we want to celebrate you and honor you for that. Um, <laughs> One thing first, eh? mm. what inspired you guys to write about hooked or thriving in love, sex, and relationships? What inspired you guys to come up with such a kind of topic and decide to write about that? I'll go first this time round. Mm. So um, I know that very many young people make a lot of mistakes in this area. Mm. And growing up uh, myself, I made a lot of those mistakes mm. uh, where you just get into a relationship mm. because you know your friends are getting into a relationship. Mm or uh, maybe you're, in, you're looking out for something. So there were those mistakes that we made. Mm. And then looking around my circle of mm. friends and the young people that you know, we are around, mm. I could see a lot of those mistakes mm. as well. You know, mm. People just date, you know, relationships break. Mm. People don't know why they are dating. And, and, and we sat down and said, we had been dating for four years before we got married. Mm. So we sat down and said, you know, what can we do to help the young people? Mm. Uh, you know, we have a story that we could, you yeah. know, write from yeah. and encourage people and teach people about this beautiful topic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's pretty much said most of it. 
Um, but, you know, we spent so many years in school. I'm an industry engineer by profession. I spent uh, nursery school one year, primary school seven years. Those are eight years. Um, secondary school six years. How many are those? What's eight plus six? Mm. Fourteen, Fourteen years. And then university four years. I spent 18 years of my life being trained to become an engineer. However, often when we are getting into relationships, for some reason, people assume, because they have the hardware, you know what I mean, they will just dive into the relationship and somehow figure their way out, or into a marriage, or into what. And, and so many people don't want to get knowledge mm. about relationships. They think it's obvious. Mm -hmm. On our journey with Bobby, we found that it's, it's actually not obvious. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the things we had to learn from people. But during that time, there wasn't a lot of material, especially locally, within our context. There wasn't a lot of material that addressed love, sex, and relationships. Mm. Most of the material, we just stumbled into it, maybe because yeah. of our mentors and whatever. So mm. when we wrote down the book, we're trying to say, okay, mm. what are some of the things that young people struggle with, based on our experience mm. and some of the experiences of our friends, mm. that we need to teach young people about, mm. where they can just flip pages and find information mm. on, at their fingertips mm. about love, sex, and relationships. Mm. And so it's from that place that we sat down and co-authored this book, mm. and uh, we believe it is a great blessing to many people. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting you mentioned uh, that uh, you guys dated for four years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you were on campus by that time, right? Yes, yeah. we were. How, how was that process like for you, dating for four years? Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's a reality today that uh, relationships, I know a relation, I know a friend who, t I know, I, this, this is our friends were speaking, and someone said that uh, if a relationship took three months, yeah, it's headed to marriage because you guys are thriving. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you guys are thriving. <laughs> meaning, like, meaning that today, relationships die after two yeah. months or even weeks. Yeah. So how, um, how was it possible for you guys to date for four years and then later make it into marriage? I think that for us, really, um, what was different uh, was the fact that when we went into this relationship, we knew where it was headed. We mm. knew that you know, we're not just dating to have fun, to go out, but we're dating to eventually get married, start a family, and do mission together. Mm. So I think that helped us. Uh, not to say that we didn't have challenges. The challenges were there. Mm. Um, the temptations were there. But knowing where we were going was really helpful. Mm. Uh, uh, really, that was the focus. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and you know, it's it's uh, it's funny you say that that you guys had you, it was like an intentional relationship that you talked about even before anything else. Mm -hmm. And yet in the book, uh, you guys write I think uh, the very first the very first um, foundations of foundations uh, real love and something. Mm -hmm. And then Ivan says that he had he had seen other uh, he, had, he had seen other dazzling, nice looking babes. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, you are not the first one striking. Yeah, of course. But for some reason, uh, he says that uh, he always felt like those ones he needed like a piece of them. Now, the question I want would be, uh, what was special about Barbie that you chose to, you know, those ones just needed a piece, but you needed to marry Barbie. Would you help us understand that? For starters, she cute. <laughs> 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 the cutest babe this side of the universe. By the way, I promise you, you can do your research. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> what about Barbie? Um, so, in my mind, there's a difference between love and lust. Mm. Okay, um, it's possible for you to look at someone and like you said, mm. you want a piece of them. You want something from them. Mm. Maybe you're struck by their beauty or whatever. I, I usually use the analogy of a house. It's possible that you can go, for example, to Mapera House here in town in Kampala and you look at it on the outside and it is so beautiful. Mm. And it strikes you like, wow, what a mm. beautiful structure. Mm. But you see, in Mapera House, when you get into the house, I into that building, mm. you'll find that there are lifts, there are rooms, there, there are small, small nooks and crannies in there that don't look as magnificent as what That's the building outside. is mm. outside. Mm. Okay? Mm. And for me, my definition of lust is that you look on the outside and you say, I want a piece of it. But when you get inside, and you find out those nooks and crannies that don't look as good, mm. you're quick to run out of the place. Mm. Because yeah. what took you there wasn't that you were committed mm. to live in this building, mm. but you just wanted the look, the outside look of the building. Mm. I find that that's similar to what lust is. Mm. 
okay? W that I would look at all these babes, yes, they were cute. Mm. Yes, they were striking. Of mm. course, not as striking as her. Mm. But the thing is that in my heart, mm. I didn't feel like I was ready to commit to any of them mm. for them to be my what? For them to be my wife. Mm. And like I usually tell people, I didn't want to date anyone. I wasn't mm. going to marry. Mm. It was clear that everyone I needed to date, I needed to marry them. Mm. Because for me, I believe that should be the purpose of dating, mm. to get me to a place where I'm going to marry mm. someone. Mm. And so I find that when you love someone, mm. you're willing to commit mm. to them, mm. regardless mm. of what you find out along the way, even mm. in the process of dating. I loved her. Mm. I, believe, I believe in God. So mm. part of the other thing is that in my heart after I prayed, mm. God, I felt like God gave me a certain peace about her. Mm. that I never had with other babies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they were cute. Yeah. Yes, they were, probably they were good candidates for me to marry. But I, when I prayed, I didn't have a certain peace. Yeah. But for her, when I prayed, and we hadn't mm. met for a long time, by mm. the way. Yeah. I didn't even know her son name for a long time. Mm. I didn't even have her number mm. for a long time. I didn't even know how many siblings she had. Mm. But yeah. in my heart, I knew. I, one, I knew that God had okayed it. Mm. But then, two, I loved her. Mm. I, did, I, I was willing when we when we when I proposed and she said yes. I remember telling her when you say yes, mm. the yes you are saying is headed for marriage. Mm. So take all the time you want. I'm mm. not here to play. I'm mm. not here to try out. Mm. I'm here to commit to mm. you mm. because I love you. Mm. I don't just want to go and hang with you. Mm. Probably have sex mm. or kiss mm. or what. Move around with you as a trophy babe. And then after some time I dump you and then find <laughs> another one. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to commit yeah. because I loved her. Yeah. First and foremost because God told me she's the one. But also too because I love yeah. And it's, I was to it's interesting you say that because in the book, Bavi, uh, I think uh, you write and say that she took her time to say yes. I think when you proposed, was it? Mm. She took her time to say yes. And for you, to f you felt like it was the, the longest time ever. <laughs> 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 the longest time ever. Yeah. So, yeah. Bavi, were you not sure that uh, Ivan was the guy? Were you not sure that this was the right relationship for you to, um, for you to, you know, to finally say yes, yes, yes to and then end up in, a, in marriage? What, why, what took you so long? I actually think that I didn't even take long. It didn't take it, long. It, it wasn't really long. It was <laughs> about a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Never mind, it felt like <laughs> years for me. It felt like years. <laughs> but the thing, like he said, when you are going to commit to a relationship, mm. I had been in a relationship before and I had ended it quickly, I think about four or five months. Mm. And I had told God that I don't want to get into another relationship, mm. that I'm just, you know, having fun and I don't know where it's headed. Yeah. So I wanted to take off time and you know pray to God, find out whether this is the relationship he wants for me, mm. uh, whether I actually want to marry this guy. Because yes, I've been seeing him, but you know, you want to be sure that this is the person you want to spend the rest of your yeah. life with yeah. before you even go ahead to make the commitment. Yeah. So I needed that time and I had a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, concerns, a lot of, you know, are you ready? Are you not ready? Are yeah. you sure this is what you want? So I needed time to, you know, just reflect and, and be sure that this is the kind yeah. of person I want to yeah. marry. Yeah, yeah. It's good to know. It's good to know that. Yeah. Um, I know someone right now is wondering and, and saying, "Okay, it's it's good to hear this story." And you know, others as, as we plan to talk to you, we had many questions coming about this very particular topic. And someone was asking and asking themselves, "At what point? At what point of time? At what age is it appropriate for someone to start relating?" Yeah, at what age should someone start relating? Because we have had people relate at different uh, at different stages of life. Yeah. So at what point should surely someone start relating? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <coughs> that's that's a question that comes up pretty a often. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I've met yeah. people who met in primary school and today they are married. Mm -hmm. mm. I've met people who met in high school and today they are married. Mm. Mm. I met her in her first year. I was in my second year. We are married. Mm -hmm. mm. I've met people who have met at work. I've met people who have met way after work, yeah. in their 40s, in their 50s, and they're married. Yeah. So usually people want a straightforward answer at this age. Mm. Unfortunately, that mm. age doesn't exist. Mm. I yeah. can't say that at this age, behold, it's even not in the Bible, but <laughs> behold, thou shalt get married <laughs> when you're 18 years old. No, it's not there. In Uganda, <laughs> our adult age is 18. Yeah. In the New West, it is 16. Uh, so you will find that it varies yeah. with different people. Yeah. But here is what I usually tell people. Mm. Okay? Um, 
one, it, when you, you know, God has given us guidelines for everything. And, and again, we write more about this in, in, in our book. Yeah. But before Adam, before mm. God created Eve for Adam, mm. there are certain things that were in place for Adam yeah. before Eve came into the picture. Yeah. Okay? One, Adam was in the presence of God. Mm. Okay? Adam had a relationship with mm. God because God used to come in the cool of the day and mm. talk to him. Mm. Adam had work. Mm. Okay? He, his work was to tend mm. the garden of Eden. Mm. He had work. Mm. So he had a relationship with God. He had work. Mm. He had purpose. Mm. God created him to um, have dominion, mm. fill the earth and subdue it. He had work. He had purpose. He had an identity. Mm. He was created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. So he had all these things, relationship with God, mm. identity in God, purpose from God, work that he was doing before Eve came into the picture. Mm. So that should give you a sort of like guideline mm into what needs to be in place mm. before you start considering mm. taking on someone's uh, mm. child or daughter yeah. or, or son yeah. to marry them and yeah. start the journey of yeah. relationship. Yeah. That's why I usually encourage people that some of these things need to first be in place. Mm. Work, purpose, identity, they mm. may come in at different places, mm. but they need to be in place yeah. before. At least that's what the Bible, yeah. the example I see in the Bible with the original person, yeah. before God said it is not good for man to be alone. Mm. But uh, to directly answer your question, there is no particular age. There's no particular age. Yeah, yeah it's, it's you can literally just not yeah. there. I would yeah. be lying to you if I said it's there. Yeah, but I like, th I like the fact that you say that at least one can identify and know, okay, this is, a, this is something we can learn from the Bible. I should yes. have work, I should have purpose. Yes. For me, at least to identify and know, yes. okay, this is now, it's okay this for, me to, season, yeah, it's season for me to get yes. a helper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but it's also very important for, for people to know that, you know, God is there to consult. Yeah. He has given us Amazing. his Holy Spirit. You yes. Know, so you, you can ask the Holy Spirit and, you know, and he'll guide, he'll guide you, he'll direct you. Mm. So when you consult and, you know, it's a no, it doesn't matter whatever age you are, mm. please don't go in. Mm. If you consult and it's a yes, mm. please go ahead, yeah. no matter the age. Yeah, I think it's very important for someone to understand and know that uh, it's a prompting of the Holy Spirit, just yeah. like you've helped us understand. Yeah. But maybe there's someone watching and maybe even wondering, how do I get prompted by the Holy Spirit? And I think we'll get to understand that as we come in and they can feel free to post those questions on our line. But it's a prompting that comes from the Holy Spirit and Ivan helped us know that uh, you know, one should have work, uh, one should uh, be in a closer relationship with God, but also, uh, you know, you should have purpose for you to be able to bring in someone as a helper, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. uh, the question would be, you guys being able to date for four years, and you help us understand in your book, Hooked, mm -hmm. uh, an amazing book for, you know, someone watching to buy. Uh, how are you guys able to maintain purity for the four years you are dating at campus? <laughs> I laugh because it wasn't easy. Yeah. Um, our journey was one where we had to decide almost every day that, you know, we are going to honor God and his word mm -hmm. because he honors purity. Um, of co uh, let me see. The first thing we did was know that God wants us to be pure until mm. we are married. Mm. The second thing was uh, we constantly talked about it. Mm. Uh, every time we'd set boundaries and almost break them, we'd go back and say, okay, we are not doing this again. Mm. Now we are going to be pure, mm. purer. And, mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we'd come back to the same place and discuss. <laughs> but the most important thing that I would like to share is that we are accountable to people. Mm. Uh, we are both leaders in church, mm. um, so we were accountable to our pastors, mm. and we have a church where, you know, people are very interested in your life, mm. and that was very helpful. Mm. Uh, so, we, you know, I couldn't imagine myself coming to my pastor, and I'm like, I'm pregnant, I said, what, how do you explain that, or even to the people that you lead. You yeah. yeah. So that accountability was really important. Yeah. Yeah. It mm. really helped us. Thank you. Ivan, uh, knowing that for us men, eh, we're very physical. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, look at, you, look at a, you look at a lady and you feel like you just want to just go all in. Yeah? How, are you be, or how are you able to maintain that very particular purity in your relationship? Well, like she said, it, it wasn't easy. Mm. Um, it wasn't easy. I am human. I don't know, I'm spiritual, but I have a human body. And I have blood flowing through these veins here. And I'm very normal, and she's a cute babe. So mm. I was, there was a lot of temptation mm. to go and do it, to go and have sex. You're like, when we have it, after all, we are going to get, get married, married. Right? <laughs> Yeah, so why don't we just do it? Mm. Of course, um, I think the ultimate thing, the very first thing that kept us 
is the truth that we exalt God and his word above anything in our lives. Mm. And I know that no human being is capable of overcoming sexual desire by themselves. Mm. Yeah, sure. It is not in us as human beings to overcome sexual desire by ourselves. Mm. If they put you here, human by yourself, and they put sexual desire here, I promise you, most likely sexual desire will have dominion over you. Mm. That's why it's a force that kills, destroys, what does so many things. And yeah, it's a good thing. Mm. So God ultimately, mm. because we know that in his word, you live, you cleave before you become one flesh. That's the order that he gave um, in the book of Genesis, that you have to first live and then be joined, have a covenant, and then you can have sex. So we chose to exalt his word above all other things. Mm. Two, we chose to be very accountable, like she said. We are in worship harvest, and in worship harvest, we are very transparent and very accountable. People would ask us the whole time, we'll tell people where we are going, we are accountable at every level, mm. with our leaders, mm. with our peers. She had people who held her accountable. I had people who held me accountable. Mm. Many things. The mm. third thing would be boundaries. Mm. Boundaries. Of course, remember I started with God for a reason. I didn't start with boundaries for a reason. Mm. Because their boundaries would set and would break them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, would set them and sometimes break them. But the thing I usually tell people is that you can't get a margarine or blue band and you get it next to fire and then you think it won't melt. Mm. It will it definitely melt. It will melt. Yeah. So wisdom says that put some boundaries. Mm. Say, okay, do you know what? I know we both have fire and fire, but I can't stay at your house past a certain time. Yeah. Marjorie says I want fire. Yeah, Marjorie says <laughs> I want fire, but please, just please put a boundary between it and the fire because when you take it to the fire, it will melt. A time yeah. will come when you will need to melt. Yeah. Yeah, but for now, just, just keep it within those boundaries. But yeah. remember, it flows from... You choosing to honor God mm. and his oh, word yeah. above everything else. Mm. Then it works with accountability and boundaries because then his power and his word will give you strength mm. to sustain all these other things. Uh, yeah. um, thank you very much, Ivan, for that part. Uh, and you know, maybe boundaries may work for someone, maybe saying, okay, uh, I need to set boundaries, I need to have all these things in order. But for someone watching and saying, well, I've messed up, I've pretty much messed up. Yeah. I, th I think for me, I'm beyond repair. The boundaries I've broken, mm. there are way so many. Mm. How can, how, w w what should they do? Are they, uh, is, is, it, is it done for them? Is it a done deal for them to have a healthy and meaningful relationship? Is it done for them to have, you know, to thrive in sex, uh, love, and, you know, and, and, you know, and even, uh, you know, ultimately enjoy marriage? You know, well, how can you be able to help someone who knows they have messed up completely, Kabisa, even they're watching right now? The beautiful thing about... Uh, about our God mm. is that he's a redeemer. Yeah. Sure. He's a redeemer. That he will take whatever the enemy meant for evil in your life and he will just turn it around for your good. Mm. The Bible says that if any man be joined to Christ in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he's a new creation. Mm -hmm. The old is gone mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. new and is come. come. Yes. Mm. And so for a person out there who feels like, I have messed up so bad. Look, in Christ the old is gone. Is it a fact that you have messed up? Yes. 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 And I'm not saying that it's, mm, you should deny it. No, you have messed up mm. and it's okay. Mm. But is it also true that God is able to redeem you and give you a fresh start? Mm. Yes. Mm. So you can have a fresh start in mm. Christ. Yeah. You can have a fresh start and have a marriage and a relationship mm. that is super duper good yeah. and cool yeah. in Christ. So don't lose hope. That's yeah. a voice from the enemy who yeah. wants to destroy you. Yeah. God yeah. is out to redeem you yeah. and rewrite your, your story. story. Yeah. 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 And enjoy yeah. a super duper <laughs> <laughs> relationship, <laughs> yo. <laughs> All right, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's very important for someone to know that uh, they can be redeemed, but also the steps for redemption, um, it's another whole thing. Yeah. And uh, I think if you're there and asking yourself, then how can I be able to, how can, I, how can I find redemption? How can I offer steps towards redemption? Mm -hmm. Please don't, don't get shy. Uh, go on our Facebook page, leave those comments, leave your digits, your questions, and we can be able to get in touch with you and help you through the whole process. Um, knowing, that, um, knowing that we are you know, walking this journey, and choosing the right, the rightful person also may take time for someone to choose the rightful person. Yeah. What makes you think that this was the right relationship for me to be in? What makes a relationship the right relationship? What made it right for you? Um, my pastor usually loves to say that 
if, if A went with B, they would work out. If A went with C, they would work out as long as the things, are, the, the things he wants are in place. Mm. So for me, there are things that I had in place that I knew I wanted in a person. Mm. Uh, I had been in a relationship and I knew what I did not want. Mm. So I, I know what I don't want, I know what I want, mm. and I put them together and found the right person. Mm. So I knew, first of all, that I wanted a man who loves God, mm. genuinely. Mm. Um, sometimes we are duped by people who are churchy, and then you get there and you realize that, <laughs> oh, this was, you know, this was crappy. But, you know, you have to have to be with someone to know that they love Jesus, yeah. and they love him genuinely. Yeah. So that was first for me. I wanted yeah. a man who had a good character, humble enough to you know, acknowledge when he makes a wrong, humble enough to grow, yeah. to yearn, to grow, to be better. Yeah. I wanted a man who, if we talk five years, we know where we are headed. I can see myself somewhere in the picture five years. Yeah. And, and when I met him, these were in place for me. So I, and it's been a growth journey. I can't even say that I knew at the beginning for mm. sure. But I, I, when you pray to God and you have seen someone for some time, mm. you know. Mm. you know for sure mm. that this is the right person. And yeah. the Holy Spirit, again, yeah. will, direct will direct you. Thank you very much for that. And, you know, I, I'm glad that you keep talking about the Holy Spirit, but I know many who probably would be watching may probably be uh, put off by the fact that, hey, how do I even get to know this is the Holy Spirit? Eh? But if you have those questions, please, um, don't mind, we are here to direct and help, and, and help you understand how the Holy Spirit can prompt you to know that this is the rightful person for me. Yeah. Ivan. Should I be able to cast out my net? You know, like I'm trying to find the right person, but is it okay for me to cast out my net and try this one and that one and have many so that I can stay choose safe. one and yeah. stay to stay safe so I yeah. can choose out one? Well, <laughs> as to whether it is right or not, I'll, I'll leave that one for you. I will say yes and no. Because, of course, it, it's not wise for you to just look at one person, one person only, and not have many options from whom you can choose like in your heart i'm not saying that be I'm, I'm, what i'm what i'm saying is don't go sampling people mm. Mm. okay don't go saying i'm a guy you know there's this notion in that culture where mm. they say oh, man, yeah, you first test and see mm. will she be able to give oh, birth mm, mm. if she doesn't then i oh will she be able to perform in bed mm. or oh, will he be able to perform in bed if mm. they don't then i can go and try someone else mm. then i can go try someone else mm. so you find that guys have many babes they are playing mm. they friend zone this one mm. brother zone the other mm. one over sister zone like they do so many things mm. and so the thing i'm saying is it is not wise for you to be in multiple relationships mm. okay it is wise for you to pray about if you have because like i said there were so many beautiful babes mm. i had seen mm. but i had to pray out of that those many beautiful babes mm. i had to ask god mm. to guide me to the one i would commit to mm. yeah and after I committed to that one and I was led to them, mm. then I had to forsake all the other people mm. and say, because loyalty is expensive and yeah. it is exclusive, yeah. I had to be loyal to her and mm. say, look, this is the babe that I have chosen, chosen. Mm. and I'm going to go with her. So I would not advise Amazing. any guy to just... Loyalty is, is expensive, expensive and exclusive. exclusive. So it's important for one to be loyal. Yes. And God desires us to be loyal as well. Yes. You need to be loyal. So you need to choose one person and get loyal to them. Yes. And I like that. You know, love is, lo love is the most important subjective detector to happiness. And I know all of us crave it. And it's particularly finding it in a relationship and to, uh, to someone you want to get married to is another whole different ballgame. And we want to learn, uh, like Ivan has helped us understand, we want to learn and have it right. And for us to do that, you know, you want material, you want things that you can use for you to be able to get it right. And now we have a book called The Hooked that will help you want to understand uh, about sex and even how to uh, thrive in love, sex, and relationship. I would, yeah. uh, you know, I would, I would one, uh, beg you, plead with you that you should get a copy, but also find spaces that you can plug in. And the Connect Zone is one of those spaces that you can grow and reach your God-given potential. It's, we're out of time already. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll ask Ivan to you know, say for us a very short, quick prayer as we get out of here. All right, let's pray.
Um, Father, thank you. Thank you that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Mm. Thank you that sex is your idea, you created it, and that you want us to thrive in love, sex, and relationships. Mm. So I pray for everyone that is watching us. Lord, I pray that you will guide them on this journey, mm. that you will help them overcome whatever past mistakes they may have made, mm. and that you will lead them to find the right people and stay committed to them all the days mm. of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Until next time, see you.